finals of Dallas Regionals, uh, Isaiah Williams, Zorak Eggs versus Riley, uh, Lon Zorak, Zorak Muck, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, so we see what should be an initial Bridget from Isaiah. And I already talked about this matchup a little bit in the last video, but I'll touch on it again. Um, I think it is favored for Isaiah. His deck's more consistent, faster, more aggressive. Um, at some point, Riley's Muck comes down, and the both decks become the same thing. Um, but the early game and the control uh, for the early game, um, and if I, Riley's never able to get Muck out, uh, is always over on Isaiah's side, I feel like. Um, so I don't feel like Isaiah's favored overall. Um, he gets a Bridget. I expect to see triple Zerua. Maybe, yeah, Zerua, Zerua, Sudowoodo. Um, yeah, makes sense. Um, I, I, if, I would maybe go for triple Zerua still. I don't know. When your hand is, yeah, when your hand is like that, I think I'd maybe go for triple Zerua, to be honest. Um, so I end up an Ultra Ball. I assume this is going to go for a, another Zerua. Yeah. Um, the only thing I kind of don't like about this play is it doesn't lead well into a turn two hex um i see gets this ultra ball computer search i think in his hand so it looks like he's probably just considering just doing uh a chorus play uh turn two maybe computers for course i think i see uh computers in his hand or he's just going to commit to doing the gets this um i don't really like that either um because if your opponent just has cards it just doesn't do anything so i almost would have liked to see an ultra ball for a zork or a shaman i think he has shaman in hand actually maybe a shaman in hand i don't know i'll have to, I'll have to see how his hand plays out next turn um so we see a, a great start also from riley uh they both open with fine starters lele and um egg those are both fine to start with um this does give uh, this does this the starter from i think it gives riley an option to go turn one and get a cheesy knockout um, yep, there it is, the DC knockout. Um, promotes Arua. Uh, I think he top decks Zorak? Maybe not. But he got the Shaman set up to follow up. Um, ideally, he hexes here, I think. Uh, did he just double trade? Hold up. Maybe not. No, he set up and then traded. Okay, no, that's fine. Shaman set up. Yeah, one, two, three. And then he goes trade attach trade gets us okay 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 um two so i think he is digging for the hex here um i don't know i can't see the rest of his hand so i assume gets us is probably just the right play uh, thing to remove there um i don't i'm not so i'm not a big fan i can't see what the rest of his hand is but if he has no other draw supporter leading up into the trade away that gets us i would like to hold the gets us and try and trade away something else um, he has egg and discard pile. Like, why didn't he? Okay, he actually 100% just has egg and discard pile, right? Yeah. And then he goes trade gets this. Why wouldn't he? He 100% just go egg trade the egg. Because if he has, gets no other draw supporter, then he can at least get this for the turn. Um, and I almost feel like that's the situation currently that's happening. We'll see. The flow sun. We'll, we'll see what else he has. It's hard to tell with the, um, the setup. Flow sun down. His N. Do I like Getsus more than N? I guess N is fine. So I'm not a huge fan of discarding Getsus, though, because what I do like about Getsus is, um, or just like how about having supporters in your deck still, is um, they can't be Getsus away later in the game. If uh, Riley just decides to go for a Getsus at some point later in the game, you can't Getsus away uh, a supporter. So you still have a, something to do uh, later in your turn. So I think I still would have liked it. I would like, also, you have the option to Lele for Getsus. Um, if that ever, if you ever feel like that's a relevant situation that comes up. Um, so I think I would have liked to have seen the uh, Getsis go back into uh, Isaiah's deck. Uh, so the seconds are our second trade. That's good. Um, looks like he's going to have to commit to a two shot on the Lele. Um, we'll see if Riley can take advantage of that. Um, at least, as long as he can get at least like a Zorak and a DCE, um, the Lele can just sit on the bench. And it's kind of like just actually safe there because you always want to be pressuring Zoraks in this matchup. Um there we go. His hand does not look great. Oh, well, he's got a Zorak. Okay, so he should be good. <laughs> Debating attaching choice ban. He has Seeker. Chorus, nice. All right, yeah. Chorus. Debating the choice ban attachment. Um, so I actually don't like the choice ban attachment here. Um, so this first Zorak, unless he's committing to this attacking into this, um, then I guess this choice ban. So this is 80... Um, 
130. Okay, so if he's going to commit this lately to attack here, I guess the choice band attachment is fine. But I almost like the choice band attachment here better. Um, that way you can save the choice band here, and then this Zorak can come up with a DC this turn and hit. But if he's just going to commit to this lately hitting to the Zorak this turn, then this is, I guess, this is fine, I guess. Another Zorak. <clears throat> DC, so we'll see. I guess it's the same thing though, because he involved this Zorak. Okay, yeah, so it's about the same. I guess he needs to get the extra damage here too. So he's going to come in with the Lele to attack. Yeah, I, I think I like the Lele command to attack too, because he needs to open up a bench spot to get his Grimer down actually. Um, so yeah, coming with the Lele, I guess it's fine. And then, yeah, then you do attach a choice band here. Um, so right here, I think uh, Isaiah just wants the Hex or gets us some kind of disruption for the turn. I think uh, Hex is better. Um, also, I think he wants to retreat the Zorak and preserve it and attack with the other Zorak with the DC. Looks like he's looking at Ion up Getsis. I think I would prefer Hex. Um, oh, he's got the red card. Um, so I definitely prefer Hex here if he has access to Hex. I definitely would prefer Hex here personally. Um, so I would like to see him go Hex, retreat to the Zorak, uh, pass. Or kill. Kill the Lele. Don't pass. Be a Seeker Getsis. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of the Getsis, like I just said. I like the Hex way more. He was too impressed. Um, I don't know if he had access to the Hex, though. That's the thing. I don't know if he had access to the Hex. Um, it's like Guzma Egg. Hex is going to the discard pile. There we go. Um, and I, I, once again, I would like to see him retreat this Zorak and preserve it. Um, more trades later on. Okay, he's going to go. So I don't... I don't really like that. Um, so there's no way. That's very. After you just saw Riley's hand, it's very unlikely Riley kills a fresh Zork. But you know, this Zork's dying. Why would you give him two free prizes? Um, there's no reason to give Riley two free prizes like this, I feel like. Um, make Riley work for the one shot or like use a Guzma for turn or something. Um, I don't know. Because if he's not using Guzma, he's like. Looking through his deck that much less, you know, he still wants to find Grimer and get Muck online. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I think I would 100% uh, have retreated there myself. Computer search. I'm not, I don't even know what he's looking for here. <clears throat> uh, I guess I don't think he's played a supporter yet. He could go for a hex himself here, I guess. Um, Hex, he could actually bench some Pokemon. Looks like he got a puzzle. Double puzzle. Computer search. Battle compressor. Okay. Ultra thinning his deck. What is he going for of this? I don't. I don't know if he's traded yet or not. Draw, red card. Okay, so he's going for the red card play. Okay, I kind of like this. Then. He's gonna go. He's setting up the red card hex play, um, which is what I think. I don't know if Isaiah had access to hex this last turn, but I think that's what Isaiah should have gone for because he had the red card. I would have liked to have seen him go for the hex. And I assume this will be a hex. Yes, thanks. Not gets this. Don't gets this. Always hex. And once again, I this Zorak I don't think should be active. Uh, I think this Zorak should be on the bench. Um, you want like you want as many trades as possible. If he dies and you get like this thing happens, red card hex, um, <clears throat> or like a red card gets us, and you want as many Zorks. red card hex. I guess it doesn't do anything. Um, but then, but then, um, like I was saying, this Zorak is still alive on the bench. You know, this one can swing. Uh, it's close, I guess. No, I still like retreating with this Zorak last turn. Um, for the turn after, if he doesn't hex again, you have an option to get out of uh, uh, more trades, get off uh, after the hex chain, um, or you get out of hex. Um, I think I see a Via Seeker, so his hand is not dead. Oh, he's got a computer search. So, yeah, his hand's not dead by any means. Um, and I assume he's just going to go for a Colrus, um, and then he's going to look to two-shot this. But if Riley just has the, the once again, the hex, fill bench one shot, I think Riley kind of definitely, definitely takes over this game and will probably win. Uh, he gets a puzzle. I guess his last card in the hand was puzzle. Gets the choice band. Colrus. Okay. So he needs four bench Pokemon. 
And yeah, that's it. Four bench Pokemon off a of Colrus to nine. Uh, it's actually pretty unlikely, I think. Yeah, I don't expect the, him to get this here. I don't know if he really has another play, though, this turn. Uh, I guess his other play would have been to Sky Return for the turn. Um, he could have committed. I guess he didn't have a DCE committal, uh, commission to commit this turn. Uh, he could still Sky Return this turn, actually. He can he can Sky Return this turn. Um, so, yeah, I think he Sky Returns this turn. Um, I don't see a reason not to Sky Return, really. Uh, but I guess he's just going to go and swing in for a two-shot. Uh, choice Banter Zelazork. Makes sense. May as well commit the DC at this point. I don't see a reason not to. He puts it on that one because if his Zork gets one shot, he can go stand in, I guess, to return the KO. No, he gets extended like, one shot. The if he goes, but at this point, if Riley sees that, he's never gonna retreat to his other Zork. He always uses his active Zork to kill. I think. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Other Zork train pop trade. Uh, he should have the one shot here. I can't imagine he doesn't have the one shot. Um, but I don't like that DCE there. Um, Riley's already on odd prizes, so this you I would just put it here, and I would just plan to attack with this orc for sure. Um, I don't see a reason to ever attack with Standin. Um, I guess your thought process is if he retreats and attacks with a fresh orc and fills his bench KOs me, I need to uh, use Standin then. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't like that. I like the DC here, I think. You put DC here and end your opponent next turn. Sky Field. Field Blower. I also wasn't a big fan of that Choice Band attachment either, actually. I didn't make a note of that, but uh, um, I think you know Riley plays one Field Blower. Um, yeah, so I would like to have hold, held that Choice Band because there's no way... Um, Riley could end you here, but if Riley ever ends you here, you don't care uh, if Riley ends you here because he just didn't one-shot you. So if he ends you and you put that back in your deck, you don't care. So, yeah. And once again, we're in a situation where this guy, you so you know a couple things. You know he's probably going to hex one-shot you. So I would have liked the Sky Return still. And then promote. I don't even know what you promote at that point, to be honest. That was Zork, I guess. Uh, maybe I'm not that big of a fan of the Sky Return one-shot. Maybe that was still fine. But, yeah, I definitely like the DC on this Zorark. Um, because right now stand in stand, you can't use stand in to kill out to KO. You have to use a GX. Um, so we're gonna go see him get a GX here. I assume with this Ultra Ball. Oh, he just has it in hand. Okay, so you may as well just put the DC here um, initially. Oh, there's a Rua, and I think he has to end here. I don't see any other out for Isaiah. End KO, and then has to pull off a one shot the next turn. Hex. Did he just hex? I mean, I don't know if he has another option. So maybe the hex is just right. If he does have another option, you never hex here, though. His, like, Riley's hand is so big. Um, he needs DCE choice band. <clears throat> he might not have it, though. Bench, and then looks like Cole. Stretch over one. Colrus. Okay, yeah. I think you... Oh, maybe end is better than... Maybe hex is better than end, though. Maybe I don't hate that actually as much as I think. Um, no, because then it, it would... It would it would kill off his bench. Like, uh, Riley's bench would die if you don't hex to the Sudowoodoo. And then if you end, he goes to one. Yeah, I like ending better there. I don't know if he had the option to end, but... All right, and Riley gets it, yeah. There we go. Knockout. Game one goes to Riley. Yeah, I don't know if he had access to end in his hand. I, I couldn't tell, but I would have definitely liked to have seen uh, an end there over the the, uh, the hex. All right. Game two. Zaya going first. Computer search. Uh, with with Cole risk, with him getting rid of Cole shot the computer search, I have to assume this is going to be for a Bridget. There's no reason for it not to. Um, and actually playing down Bridget in this matchup without having to use Lele, it's really big. excuse me, is really big because then you have one extra bench space to work with um, because of the pseudo -widows. So we'll see. You set the budget roll. Okay, cool. Battle Compressor away, Egg Egg Hex. And then, oh, Computer Search for Battle Compressor, Battle Compressor, Egg Egg Hex. Um, I'm still, once again, not a huge fan of Battle Compressor away the Hex immediately. I almost feel like I wish I want to sit on the Battle Compressor and give myself the option. Um, um, and then I can decide the next turn if I want to Battle Compressor away or not. But... 
It's definitely not bad. So Zoro Zoro Sudowoodo. Um I think I would just go Zoro 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 here. Uh depending on the hand. Depending on the hand. Depending on what the hand looks like, I think I would go Zoro Zoro Zoro. Double egg back. Um looks like Ultra Ball for Shaman probably is gonna happen. Ultra Ball two egg. Shaman or Lele, I guess. Um maybe another Zoro if he does have a draw supporter in his hand still. So Lele, I assume, yep, Colas. Okay, cool. Gets Colas for next turn. Debating attaching DCE. Um, he plays two float zones, so I think you just hold it. Um, thinking about it, thinking about it, pass. Yeah, and if you do attach it, you attach it to the Zerua. The only thing bad that can happen would be Lele, DCE, Guzma. Um, and it's not that bad. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate if it does happen. Egg, egg, Zerua. So that looks like it's a double puzzle turn from, uh, Riley. Oh, stretcher. Okay. Stretcher works too. Yeah. Stretcher for the Zerua. Doesn't even have to bridge it. Um, three Zeroes in play and N. So yeah, this start. Is I mean Riley definitely needs to find some more basic Pokemon. He needs to find Sudowoodo. He needs to find Grimer, um, another Zerua. He needs something. Um, definitely gonna lose this Zerua. Well, most likely gonna lose this Zerua. You should play like you're gonna lose your active Zerua. If he doesn't, that's great actually. If he doesn't, if this Zerua doesn't die, um, you can actually go for the Paralyzing Gaze here, um, and that means almost for sure he won't get hit next turn. I would actually like to see the Paralyzing Gaze. I think. Uh, just because I think I see special charge in his hand. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen paralyzing gaze there. I saw DC in Riley's hand. If he paralyzing gazes this, there's like almost there's a very low chance that a his active would die unless he wants to use stand in. But then he has to commit stand into one of his first two Zeruas, which is never nice or never feels good. Um, Battle compressor. I assume it's gonna get rid of course this time. I see I see via seeker double puzzle double DCE stand in. So I think he might commit to the stand in right here. Um, Oh, he might even get the... Oh, he's going to full red card gets. <laughs> he's going to full red card gets. But his hand was so dead on his turn. I don't even know if I like the red card play. Like, um, red card hex is okay. But, like, Riley's hand wasn't good um, by any means. Um, so, I'm not sure how big of a fan of I am of that uh, this play coming up. Uh, it looks like it is going to be the... Uh, it looks like it is going to be the... Um, uh, Red card. It could be red card hex. It could be red card gets this. Red card. Remember, stand in first. Uh, it looks like he is going for the hex. Oh, he almost did it. <laughs> he almost hexed before he stood in. There's the stand in. Um, cut and then the hex. I think he maybe hex right there by itself would have been fine. Uh, Riley didn't have did not have a huge hand. Um, and he definitely had not that much going on in it. Um, yeah, so I think I would have, I personally would have been fine with just going hex, not committing the the puzzles this turn, to the uh, to the whole situation. Be a trade. Uh, he really needs to find bench Pokemon. If he finds bench Pokemon, I think he will actually be fine here. Um, but if he does whip this knockout, it's going to be pretty rough for him for him from here on out. Um, we'll see. We'll see what he see what he's able to pull off this. That is not enough bench Pokemon. That is for sure. Uh, he can't trade. He's under Hex. Um, so this looks like it could definitely be a game. Uh... Oh, okay, very nice. So the I mean, this isn't that great, actually, because you still you lose another Zorark. Um, so this is okay, and I think it is the right play. Man, I don't even know. Yeah, I think it has to be the right play, but you lose another... you you. The chance of you not losing a Zork here is so low that, like, um, yeah. This is this thing's probably dead, and he's probably going to hex you again. Uh, damn, I think he has double puzzle back in his hand again. Trading first. I like that. Um, he definitely wants to hex here again no matter what, I think. Ultra Ball, even if it means to go Lele to get hexed. This this will hopefully get his Arua, and then hopefully he just has Via Seeker hex in hand, DCE, uh, for the knockout. Um, so that's all I want to do. Take the knockout here and hex. Yep, there's the Lele for the hex. 
And I think he has double puzzle in hand. It'll be unfortunate if he has to use it this early to get a GCE. But if he has to, that's fine. Choice band. I like choice band there too. There is the double puzzle. Yeah, so it looks like he has to do double puzzle. Probably get DCE. DC is a rule. Okay. Yeah, there's no reason. The, yeah, there's no reason that the putting down the sky field is bad here, I don't think. The chance of Riley pulling off a one shot on his turn is super low. And then hex and then knockout. Draw. Zero. It's pretty good. Uh, but he has a computer search away. I don't know what his last card in his hand is, but uh, that's not good. Computer searching away that's a rule is definitely not good. Um, oh, it's a DC. Okay. And then chorus. Okay, yeah. Uh, I feel like this game is going to be. This game has to be probably over pretty soon. Um, well, there we go. Double puzzle. Oh, and Sudowoodo. All right, that's pretty good, actually. But he's only hitting for 40 damage right now. So I guess it has to be double puzzle for two Zerua here. Right? Field blower, Zerua. I guess that's fine as well. Give rid of the Skyfield. Give rid of the Choice Band. Uh, make it really hard for him to try and get the one shot next turn. And you're hitting for... Uh, you're hitting actually for the... the like the... A decent amount of damage. You're hitting for 60, which means... Um, uh, you're hitting for 60, which means you can then go fill bench, choice band, and then actually get the KO next turn. So it's like the perfect amount of damage. Trades. Once again, I think uh, Isaiah just wants to sit here and hex chain. If he can get the hex KO, that's even better. If he gets a hex knockout here, he probably just wins the game. Um, which is why it was unfortunate for him to have to burn the um, the double puzzle last turn. Because using him this turn, he'd probably for sure be able to get the knockout. Um, at the very least, I would like to see him retreat this Zorark and preserve it. Um, got another trade going. Uh, preserve this Zorark. Uh, if you can find a DCE and a Hex. Just go DCE to bench Zorark. Hex. I don't see a DCE though. Uh, but he might have actually have the full the full knockout here. Four egg back. Skyfield? DCE for Hex. There's no Skyfield in play. <laughs> all right <clears throat> um try to think how big of a, if that's a big missed up or not i guess it's not that bad on isaiah's side um, his turn would end the same he would have hexed and hit um yeah he didn't have skyfield there so now he just hexed and hit uh he thought he had the knockout but yeah uh bradley did field blow away the skyfield that turn so actually the big the big misstep here is actually this choice band um, losing that choice band could hurt a lot in the end, quite a bit in the end. Um, this choice band should be back here or just back in hand. Um, that's the only thing that could really hurt it. <coughs> Excuse me, so that's a mistake for sure. Also, I guess, no, a bunch of the egg is, is going to be, eh, that could hurt in the end. It shouldn't, though. Most likely not. Gets this for one. Like, once again, I mentioned before, I don't think gets this is actually that strong to use. In the mirror match, um, once they play down puzzles. Once they play down puzzles, like any amount number of puzzles. Well, not any number. One puzzle is different. If they play down uh, any, like, if they play down two puzzle using, uh, I feel like using, um, uh, uh, guess this doesn't really have that big of an effect anymore. Uh, so once again, another really lackluster turn from Riley. We're going to see triple trade from Isaiah. Uh, I think he's about to deck out. <clears throat> and... He definitely kills this active Zorark. Um, he should just be a seeker for a Hex. Um, so he can shut off the Sudowood on the following turn and one-shot the Toad that is most likely going to come active. Um, so I'd like to see him put another DC in play. Yep, on a Zorark. Um, via Seeker for a Hex. Uh, for next turn, if he has a Via Seeker, yep, there's a Via Seeker just to put Hex in hand. Actually, you want to just Hex this turn anyways, I think. Um, so if he, if he had two Via Seeker, Via Seeker for Hex, Via Seeker for Hex, if he has both Hex in the discard pile. Um... I guess you could not hex this turn as you'll be shutting off Zorak will be like, he'll be killing his only Zorak in play, but yeah, I guess you still hex. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hex, right? Yep, hex plays. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to hex. If he had another VC in hand, I would have liked to have seen it get another hex, but um, it's fine. <clears throat> Pass. Draw. He has Skyfield. He has the eggs. Um, he just needs a hex to shut off Sudowoodo. And if he doesn't get it, he should be fine either way, but... Yeah, he has it. Looks like two via seeker were the last two cards in his deck, actually. There we go. Skyfield. Hex. Quad egg. There we go. Knockout. 
All right, going on to game three. Uh, let's see. Skipping ahead, skipping ahead. Riley will be going first. Draw two mulligans. Uh, that's actually quite a bit. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, it can make your second turn way cleaner and do allow you to easily do stuff like hex training and stuff. Um, hopefully we see we see a Bridget. Ooh, turn one red card is very good too. Um, makes it very hard for your opponent to do something like a a turn two uh, uh, hex chain or anything like that after a Bridget. But I think Riley's only supporter in hand is Getsus. Let's see. Oh no, there's a Lele. I think I see a Lele there. Oh, just the raw Bridget. It doesn't even matter. There we go, raw Bridget. Uh, definitely do two Zerua probably, and then all right, she's gonna get the Grime Rider early. I like this. She's gonna go Zerua. I guess that's fine. I think I still would have liked to have seen a third Zerua. Uh, third Zerua. Uh, I don't know what I would replace it with, so I guess this is fine. Um, you're not. You're going first. If you're going second, I guess you go for a third Zerua or another Zerua. But you're going second, so you should be fine. Um, all right. So uh, Isaiah's hand isn't completely dead. He does have the computer search, and I would just have to assume this goes for a Bridget for two Zerua and a Suda Wudo. Um, I can't see it going for much else. Um, if his hand is really dead, maybe it goes for an N or a Sycamore. I don't think he plays Sycamore, so it'd have to be an N. Um, that's one of the things with not running Sycamore is like situations like this. Colrus is just not good. Uh, any your opponent is never good. Um, so he computer searched for sh Ultra Ball for shame. I don't think I like that. Let's let's play that back. Computer search, unless he prized double Bridget, which is possible. Um, but otherwise, I think I would have been content with Bridget, Bench, Sudowoodo, and then gets his next turn. Um, if he prized double Bridget, though, then he just prizes double Bridget, and there's nothing he can really do about it for sure. Um, so he does go for the Shaman. I assume he computer searched for the Ultra Ball. Um, but then why wouldn't you just computer search for Shaman, Bench, Sudowoodo, setup? Because you still need to put Sudowoodo in play. Even if Muck is coming up, you have to force him. To, you should for, still force him to get Muck, I feel like. Um, maybe this is fine. Ugh. I don't know. Now he never has to... See, the, now, now the situation becomes he actually never has to put Muck in play. Because you don't have Pseudo Widow. So that means he can go Skyfield, fill his bench, and you're locked by Pseudo Widow. Um, so it's way harder for you to keep taking Naka. It's, way, it's so much easier for Riley to do whatever he wants. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I don't understand. I don't understand that play. I, I'm just gonna have to assume both his bridges are applied because I think Bridget into gets us the next turn was a a fine play. Uh, he gets a hex off. That's cool, I guess. Um, Riley's hand looks fine though. I see Ultra Ball and DCE, so that's a Zorak attacking. But he went with hex pass. It looks like. I almost positive I saw Ultra Ball and DCE. That was maybe a stretcher I saw though, or a puzzle. <laughs> so I don't know why he wouldn't start pressuring the Lele. Yeah, actually, maybe it's not. He also had Getsus in hand, but Getsus is definitely iffy. Um, I think I like the Hex better than the Getsus for sure. If uh, Really good for Isaiah if he's able to get a KO here on the Zerua, though. Really, really good. Oh, my gosh. All right, there we go. That's a big deal. Knockout. Zerua. He's got Toad. He's got Shaman. All right, he's got Wonder Tag this turn. I have to assume he top-tagged Layla then. I don't know why he wouldn't have gone for Colrus last turn. Uh, when he could have pulled ahead in the game. Um, and he, like, sacrificed his Arua there. Um, it's possible he gets a knockout here, though, actually. If he gets the knockout here, uh, he'll, it'll definitely swing the game back into his favor. Um, but he needs... Uh, it's possible with that hand for sure. He got Skyfield double puzzle. Um, Shaman. But there's a lot of DC in hand as well. It's definitely possible he gets it, though. And I feel like he has to commit to the double. There's not that much stuff to puzzle for. He's going to get Arua red card. Oh, that just kind of feels bad. <laughs> it doesn't feel good at all, actually. Zerua. Uh, Bench of Lele. Yeah, he can still get there, though. Red card. He's going to set up for three. Um, set up for three. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Okay, wow. Well, he still needs a basic Pokemon, I think. So he's still close, but he still, he still needs to get a basic Pokemon. Uh, evolve that. He trades away the Foul Play Zork, I think, here. Yep, one, two, can't evolve again. So he actually just whiffed, he just barely whiffed the KO there, I think. Uh, yeah. If he had been able to pull that off, though, that, I mean, he needed a lot. He had to get kind of lucky there to get everything. Um, uh, whatever, take take what you can get. Um, and actually, it's like almost impossible. I don't see Isaiah being able to respond KO this at all. Um, unless he draws very well uh, right here. 
And once again, like uh, Riley never has to set up Muck or Grimer. So this, I feel like, with the way the board is currently set up, uh, Riley should eventually win because he was able to do something this turn. If he had done nothing this ne this turn, uh, this last turn he just had, he probably would have lost. But he was able to do something. So now he never has to he never has to set up Muck until Isaiah sets up. Uh, Suda Widow, which means I Riley will always sit with a full bench, one shotting everything, and Isaiah will struggle. Sometimes he might be able to get off the hex play to get up a full bench, um, but Isaiah will just struggle constantly to be able to get uh, a full bench and everything going. Like he gets this, he gets this chorus, a huge chorus for uh, thirteen here, or no, I miscounted, uh, twelve, I miscounted again, eleven. Um, but he's not going to be able to actually take a one shot. Um, and there's nothing he he has no way to prevent Riley from one shotting him, uh, pretty much ever. He has a field blower, so he can field blower away the the, the stadium. But he plays only a one of field blower, um, so he actually really needs to find that field blower. I guess not this turn, but next turn. His Zork is already getting two shot. Uh, he really just needs to find more Zorks this turn. Um, I guess the next turn he can look to follow uh, set up the uh, the pseudo widow, which will then force out the muck, um, which is what he really needs to try and do. After his active Zorok dies. Um, he can look to get the pseudo widow in play. Choice bin there. I guess it's fine. <clears throat> he does play the three choice ban, so. Stand in Zork. Oh, okay. He just plays stand in too. I forgot about stand in. Stand is actually huge here to take the knockout. I completely forgot about stand in being a card. So yeah, stand in's going to take a knockout here. Oh man, what is Riley's answer to the stand-in? Stand-in's actually a big deal here that he has stand-in. Uh, just killing him with Zork, I guess, is fine. There's not the chance of another stand-in. He really needs to get... Uh, yeah, there we go. Zorua, cool. Um, chorus or uh, N. Okay, N's actually pretty good here too, I guess. Um, yeah, limiting down Isaiah's cards. Just make it so like Isaiah can never get the one shot off is like a pretty big deal. And I think by any him, he's pretty much setting that up. Um, because, once again... Uh, Riley was never forced to put Muck in play, so Isaiah is stuck with um, four bench. Um, he doesn't have the pseudo yet to force out the uh, other bench Pokemon. So let's see. Shaman. Shaman's cool. Uh, he'll take the knockout here, and then he has to look to kill the Zorks, I guess, back to back. Uh, DCE to go for the setup. He actually might here put the muck in play to stop because he's he is at this point he is going to open up Isaiah's bench, but when he kills this, um, Isaiah will open up a bench spot. So you could put the muck in play here to stop Shamans or Lele's from happening. Um, yeah, okay. So he wants to he can shut that down now. Um, what this does do though is it does mean that if Isaiah just has a Colrus, uh, so I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't think if Isaiah just has a Colrus here. I think I, it's not that hard for Isaiah to get the one shot now. Um, I see a DCE in his hand and a Via Seeker. Can't propagate. <laughs> Trades first. Not a huge fan of trading first. Once again, I think if he I, he has a Via Seeker, I don't know if he has Colchester in the discard pile though. Actually, um, if he doesn't have Colchester in the discard pile, I guess that's just fine. Trading again. Two. Uh, but if he does have Colchester in the discard pile, I'd have liked to have seen DCE on this Zorok and then just Colrus. And then try and hit all the Pokemon that you need to take the knockout. Um, let's see. All I see is Via Seeker, though. I think there is a Colrus in there. I can't tell. That was maybe a Getsis. He's looking at Guzma now. I don't know what he would Guzma knock out, though. Oh, that's rough. I guess a Shaman, and then he could look to, like, Guzma kill Sudowoodoo the following turn, but that just doesn't feel good at all. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good for uh, Isaiah right now, I don't think, at all. Because um, I would assume Riley could would be able to maybe pull off the return knockout for sure. Be a Seeker. Cole. So he had Cole. So he had Cole the whole time. So I don't. once again, I don't like these trades that he did first. I don't think it's that unreasonable for him to get the one shot here. He has choice man. He has DCE already. Uh, we're going back to here. He puts the DCE down, and then he's like, uh. And then he goes trade, trade, thinks about his turn for a while, and then Colrus is. 
I think Colrus first is just the optimal play to go with. You're drawing 11 cards plus two trades. Um, it's not. I don't think it's unreasonable at all for you to get that one shot there. But if you trade first, you're not building on your hand once again. I think it, the optimal the optimal supporter for this turn was actually Colrus. Um, I personally think the optimal supporter for this turn was actually Colrus. So there's no reason not to just play Colrus first before you trade. In fact, you always should play Colrus first before you trade. Um, so I don't like that. Um, no, we'll see what he gets. If he whiffs a one shot here, uh, game's still close, I guess. Riley's still behind a turn on knockouts. Um, if you whiff the one shot here, I don't know if you promote uh, Zorak or not um, to, to hit in, or if you play for the one shot the following turn. Um, it all depends on what his hand is. Um, so I think promoting Lele, or leaving Lele active could be fine. Actually, even keeping the flow zone in play and just retreating to Shaman and passing could be fine. Um, I think Riley's, Riley's uh, ideal play next turn is like Guzma kill this Zorark, um, or just even N. Oh, he's actually pretty close. He has three puzzle in hand. Yeah, I think if he just got the one-shot this turn, he just wins the game. But now he's going for the poke damage. Um, once again, Riley's still behind a turn on winning the game. Let's see a trade. He needs to pull off some kind of uh, disruption play, I think, for sure. Uh, this turn, I guess next turn he could just N. Um, once again, I don't like, uh, I don't really like sacrificing a trade Zorark, um, cause I think you can for sure get off the one shot next turn on this as Isaiah. Uh, so I kind of want to keep the trade Zorarks in play in case I get end this turn. Um, now the end becomes way worse for Riley. If this is just on the bench and you just set up Shaman for the turn, you could even just, yeah, you could even send up Shaman. You could just push Shaman for the turn, let Shaman die. Keep the float zone in play. Um, it's not two free easy prizes for there and out. So you could do something like a Guzma kill muck and then that. Rips his bench away if you get your pseudo widow back in play. And then makes it to like um Yeah, if you like send up Shaman, Shaman died, get back Muck, Guzma uh, get back pseudo widow, Guzma kill Muck. Uh rips his bench away. He can no longer one shot your GXs, and then you just have to find two more prizes. Um leaving his shaman in place are nice though to, to kill those. Um I hundred percent think last turn Isaiah should have cold wrist first and then traded. I think he probably would have gotten the full bench uh and knockout. Um and then this turn I actually think he should have retreat to Shaman and passed. Um, keep keep the trades or can play because now if, now if Riley ends you it hurts way more you're getting end to three and you have one trade in play yeah so I'm not a big fan of that play either I think just retreating to Shaman and passing is fine and then if if uh, Riley does commit to the Guzma kill on this um, uh, you still have that huge hand your hand is still huge and you can try and set up you could try and set up the, actually that play I talked about on the on the kill on the muck um, and then it limits it limits Riley's bench, and then Riley has to then struggles to one shot again, and then you have two turns to set up a one shot. You have two turns after that, so yeah, yeah. If 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 you promote Shaman here, Riley kills Shaman, goes down to three prizes, and then you follow up with uh, uh, draw for turn. Uh, oh no, you can't kill Muck because your bench is limited. Oh shoot, my bad, my bad. You can't actually kill Muck. It is 120. For some reason, I think Muck has 100 HP, um, or is Muck weak to dark? Is Muck weak to dark? Yeah, I'm gonna look that up right now. Pokemon card. Let me look that up right now. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find it real fast. There it is. Is he weak to dark? No, he's weak to psychic. Yeah, for some reason, I'm always on Muck having 100 HP. Okay, my play doesn't work because Muck has 120 HP. Well, I don't know why I always think Muck has 100 HP. I almost misplayed, actually, in San Jose because of that, too. I thought Muck had 100 HP. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's 120. So my play doesn't work that I was just talking about. Uh, but still, I still actually like setting up Shaman and sacrificing Shaman for the turn and going for the one-shot next turn. I still like that play. Uh, preserves your uh, preserves your uh, Zoroarks. Um, Riley can't... Uh, um, what was I just saying? Um, if he goes to Guzma, kill this, you keep your big hand. Otherwise, he ends. Uh, here he's going for Ace Arola and Quaking Punch, which is actually, I really like this play too. Because um, there's... Uh, at this point, I think Riley could maybe... Ace Arola, uh, Isaiah out of the game. Um, see, I think he's computer searching. I think he's taking Puzzle of Time. I couldn't actually tell there. Um, he can set up a Quaking Punch hit here. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe he then kills it with... I don't know if I fully understand this Quaking Punch play yet, but I'll see what else he's doing for his turn. So he's going to go set up the red card, Quaking Punch. Gets computer search back. So he's setting up a red card quaking punch play is what he's doing. But this Zork is still alive and this Zork is still alive. Um, so he's not trying to have trade. I don't actually know how much damage is on this Zork. 
Oh, it was enough to quicking punch kill. Oh, okay. That's a big game. Oh, yeah. He had like seven match. Okay. This is actually really good then. I didn't know the quicking punch was actually killing the Zoroark. That's a big deal. All right. I really like that play then. And now if I say it doesn't actually get a kill here, uh, I'm pretty sure I say it just loses the game. Um, so once again, if he had just left the Zoroark on the bench, um, I guess uh, Riley, Riley wouldn't have been able to ace a roll of this. Uh, but that's actually not a big deal with this play that Riley made. He probably still would have gone Guzma quaking bunch, but it still forces the Guzma. I still would have definitely have liked to see the Zorak still on the bench and you sacrifice. Maybe you send Lele with the float zone still active because then you can retreat it if you want to. Um, but I still think you just push up Shaman and pass. Or Sky Return Shaman if you have DC, push up Lele. Um, if you don't Sky Return Shaman, you're never using Shaman anymore because of the muck. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I would have liked that Zorak sitting on the bench for sure on... Uh, Isaiah's last turn. Actually, did he have to ace a roll? No, no, no. The muck toad was in play. Yeah, that's fine. Now he's going for the character play. Push egg. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I would have maybe pushed up Zork and just hope he couldn't have killed the Zork. But if uh, if Riley can just kill the Zork this turn, I'm pretty sure Riley just has game. Uh, we'll have game on the following turn. He needs what? Choice band, it looks like. He has Seeker. Mm. Okay, so he probably, I just assume he has Choice band. DCE. Choice band, yep. Special charge, yep. So now, uh, it's I don't I don't even know how Riley actually loses this game. Uh, no Zorak setup, I'm pretty sure. I say it's pretty much out of Choice bands and DCEs. Um, knockout. I guess it's possible. Also, once again, it's possible. Isaiah could have played around the toad lock that was going to happen. Uh, he had three puzzle in his hand. I think a via seeker. So he could have used those for specific resources that he knew he would need. Um, that's kind of a hard thing to pull off, though. Uh, I see double puzzle in his hand now, but I don't see a way. It would be so hard for him to like fill his bench and get the knockout this turn. Um, I don't even know if he has enough Pokemon left in his deck to actually pull that off. And I'm sure uh, Riley has out to like a Guzma kill on the egg or something next turn as well. Um, so maybe Isaiah's only out is to end and then hit into this, but that's uh, I don't think that I, I don't even think that'll eventually win him the game. We'll see. I right, stand in knocks out, but then he needs a way to disrupt Riley as well. So I guess stand in plus N. Um, yeah, stand in plus N would work, I guess. Standing plus N, standing plus red card hex, red card gets us. Red card gets us sounds pretty good. I don't know if he has access to a red card gets us combo. Um, N is the easy one because it's just double puzzle for those two cards. Um, I think red card gets us would be pretty good too. Um, once again, he also needs a via seeker in hand. Uh, I think the gets us is in the discard pile. So yeah, the stand in, the stand in N is just, I don't actually know which one's better. Um, it depends what resources are left in um, Riley's deck. Uh, Bending Shame is nice. It's not in your deck anymore. It stays thinned out of your deck. Um, so, yeah, he'll retreat. Or even stand in. You can stand in. Mind Jack, knock out. And then for Riley, Riley just needs a DCE. Um, yeah, Riley just needs DCE. And he just special charged two back in. So I, feel, I find it unlikely that he would probably whiff. Um, he's going to see four cards. Mind Jack knockout. So the Zorak draw. Trade. Two. There's DCE. Okay. So actually, actually, that was super close in the end then. If Riley didn't hit DCE there. So I want to take another look at that. I don't think he had anything else. He literally had to hit that DCE there, I think, to win the game. Draw. Trade. Yeah, he had Stretcher and uh something else that was not a uh dce okay it was close but he had good odds i'm pretty sure to get it out of there he also could have drawn like i'm sure he could have drawn like a guzma he could have guzma this quaking or guzma ooh guzma quaking punch does not kill that but he could still have guzma quaking punch the egg actually guzma quaking punch the shaman uh just stall for time um i'm sure he had a decent amount of outs in there um 
to get. He definitely special charged, and he probably had VA Seekers left to get Cole versus or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, Riley ends up winning. Uh, wins Dallas Regionals. Um, so, that'll conclude my VOD review of Dallas Regionals. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching.